Hello Internet, my name is James, and you're watching Macabre Fanscape, the most ill-titled music channel on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's my intro. Anyways, I know it's been a while since I uploaded last. Last time I think was mid-April, and I claimed, if not in the video, in the description that I have enough content planned for uh, to last basically two upload uh, cycles, which at the time are 15, were 15 days. Uh, hopefully, now that I've finished school, I'll be able to actually upload more often. Uh, yeah, I'm a graduate now. Uh, yeah, so, um, we'll see. Hopefully, I'll be able to upload more than just every 15 days. But I got sidetracked. I got really busy, you know, finals, projects. Uh, I filmed a video that I was not very happy with. Actually, it was this one. And, yeah, I might as well explain it we're continuing with my collection a through z and this is a band if you've just watched my videos since the beginning which you know it's only like five videos so it's not hard uh i've mentioned this band i think during the metal tag maybe twice the metal tag 2021 and in the collection update but i did not include them in my last couple of uh collection you know ex libris series which is just you know me going through my library and talking about things that i like and even don't like and wanting to hear people, uh, you know, opinions from people. Doesn't happen very often, but, it, you know, every once in a while. Uh, yeah, so this band is in the ANs, and I specifically chose not to include them in my last couple videos because I have so much of their material, and I decided to just have a video dedicated to them and their stuff. Because it's a lot, and that way I can be able to, like, go through you know, the minutia a bit more and what I do like and what I don't, and even kind of act as like a retrospective on their career. Um, maybe kind of like a deep dive as, you know, the, uh, as the dark path does, but nothing that well researched. This is a very hard band to research. It turns out just because so much of their stuff is just not online, at least history, uh, published release dates. Like a lot of that stuff just does not exist on the internet. Which is the case, I feel like, a lot with a lot of these older Mexican bands. It's just hard to catalog this stuff. Uh, but that being said, let's get into it. So Anabanta was one of the earliest bands I ever got into back in the day, in like 2008 and stuff. Um, they are a Mexican gothic symphonic metal band, sort of, here and there. I'll get more into, you know, the semantics of that later. And they are super important to me. They were basically one of like what I considered one of like the top tier bands that I was ever into was Anabanta. Uh, and yeah, do I have more to say about this? So let's get a little bit into the history because they uh, basically have, you know, they, they've been around since 1997. They're an old band. So in 1997, they formed under the name uh, Sentido Pesame before changing their name, I believe in 1999 to Transdelic before ultimately changing their name to Anabanta in the year 2000. And I believe the explanation for this is that Anabanta was a guardian angel that they like went to go see a psychic and they did like a whole, th they did a seance, I guess was the story. And so Anabanta is like the name of their like Angel Guardian or whatever, <laughs> which, you know, whatever. They're, they were like into that mysticism stuff back in the day. Uh, I was never super into it. But in the early 2000s, that is their demo period. Honestly, uh, they just released a bunch of demos. Some of them are considered albums. Whether or not that is the, actually the case, I could not tell you. Again, it is hard to research this stuff. Um, and I'll get into it when we get into it. But essentially, they um, their first, from what I can tell, their first album, their debut full-length album, is this one. This is Letanías Capítulo Prohibido. This came out in 2005, I believe originally under Discos Misha, which I guess was a Mexican record label. <clears throat> and this, already through the demo uh, stuff, they had already gotten themselves a pretty large cult following, from what I can tell. Uh, and this was actually re-released in 2006 by Discos y Cintas Denver, which they did sign to, and they were signed to for a long time. And this is just really just quick fingered I feel like for a lot of compared to a lot of European gothic metal they were always a bit like faster pace a little less doomy but they did have that like dark kind of anachronistic kind of vibe to it but they also did this one thing and this is actually something that I feel like is true for a lot of the Mexican gothic metal scene is that they tend to have a lot of these like 
little bits of folk influence that like denote like kind of in a literal sense exactly where they're from which i really like like there's i feel like a song that's kind of more of a latin rock kind of influence there's a tango um yeah there's just some small things here and there that kind of just lets you know that it is in fact a latin american band which is something that i actually really enjoy um but yeah so this was re-released in 2006 this is this version uh and that comes with some bonus tracks five tracks and that is el altar de las pasiones desoladoras and sangre uh yeah really good like so good so good for like gothic metal modern gothic metal this stuff is just so good and at this point on after they uh got picked up by disco si sin Tastenberg after the release of this album then they just started working on just re-recording a bunch of demos and re-recording um and you know writing new songs as well but just really just a lot of their material bulk of it was just re-recorded demo material so they had already like built up a whole catalog of stuff before they could even get into it like a professional studio and release it um under a label and that started with this this is letanias capitulo uno and this is a series of releases uh there's actually quite a few of these and this is the one that uh originally i believe was a demo released in 2001 and that's also the one that people kind of go back and forth on whether or not it was a demo or if it was actually a full length um and it, this is a very faithful adaptation of their older material you can still find some of those demo tracks on youtube uh they just at the time they didn't like bother labeling it as like demo versus you know studio so basically you can just tell by the quality this uh album has actually very good production value uh most of their earlier uh discos y cintas in their releases have great production in a way that like the discos misha and the demo stuff just doesn't does not um but yeah very cliche kind of aesthetic i love that and just you know very simple band photo look at them and this is just very again quick fingered is very catchy that, that that's what they do best i feel like is just hooks like every song they kind of some of them do take that like verse chorus structure but a lot of them just kind of like take a hook or a chorus and just like have that be like the main part of the song so it'll be like verse chorus interlude chorus chorus like it, they don't really have like verses it's just like sometimes it'll just be a verse um but yeah super cliche stuff by the way this actually reminded me because it's a super goth you know aesthetic uh today as of filming it is world goth day so happy world goth day to all you goths um this isn't goth music i'm sorry uh that's not really my shtick here i like some of it but not this is not it um moving on they also this is actually i think from what i could tell the album that they did the first album that they did of just all new material after being signed up for Discos y Cintas en Verde. And this is Letanías Capítulo 3. This is the third, you know, al well, third chapter in the Litanies series. And this is just very straightforward. Um, yeah, just more gothic metal. Like, the symphonics haven't really kicked in yet. Uh, they're just kind of out here, you know, drifting in their cliched uh lace and roses and drinking alcohol in fun little you know glass you know goblets and stuff yeah it's just very catchy this is actually one of their weaker albums if i'm being honest but it is still just a really good time uh this one has a bit more of the male and female vocals uh, uh switching off so this band is primarily was primarily composed of two members it was Duan Mani, the vocalist, and uh, Vlad Landeros as the drummer, and at times keyboardist, and at times guitarist, and at times bassist. Basically, he just was a polymath of like musical instruments, and he also did vocals. And those were the, that was the team. It was Duan and it was Vlad, and basically every other member was just hired help. Uh, oftentimes, they were not even considered part of the band; they were just session and sometimes live. Uh, and that kind of got that that line was kind of blurred in a few of these releases where they'd have like invited musicians and then guest musicians or something it would, so you could never really you know tell um as far as I, i'm concerned mostly it was just the two members and others were just session members um because they didn't do any of the writing either and um, they were pretty much this there for recording 
even if that. Sometimes recording, rarely recording, if I'm being honest. It was just live shows. Anyways, so Janto de Libertad also came out in 2006. Oh, by the way, Relatanes Capitulo 1 and 3. Uh, and this all came out in 2006, as well was the reprint of the Letanes Capitulo Prohibido. That was also uh, 2006. And so was one more album, as far as I can tell, 2006. And we'll get to that. And this is Janto de Libertad. So this is when we first see them coming, uh, pulling back from the gothic metal stuff. This is more atmospheric, a little bit symphonic, and a lot, a lot less heavy. There are metal songs here, but it is a lot less heavy. It is just very pretty, atmospheric, uh, keyboard heavy, especially keyboard heavy. Just so pretty. This is actually a 2011 reprint of the album. You could tell because of the discs, uh, I believe. Let's see, let's test this one. Okay, yeah, this one is the original 2006 because the disc is just the design of the cover, just all sparkly. And the 2011 ones, which I honestly kind of prefer, and I wish I got this one, the 2011 reprint. This one has like the ship. It's a different artwork, I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, this was a cloudy, watery, underwater aesthetic. Phantom ships and mermaids and Big old Vlad Landeros and the mermaid. It is just so much fun. Oh, so good. So, so good. I am, I should listen to this band more. It's actually what I'm feeling at the moment. Um, just, just high, you know, very just angelic vocals under like pretty simple sometimes, you know, that, that aspect is kind of maybe something that would bug people is that at times their stuff could be a little simple in terms of structure and even, you know, playing, but it is just so just imbued with hooks and catchiness. So good. Oh my God. I don't want to be like a fan, you know, fanboying over here, but I, I can't help it. Uh, next up is the live album. This is Viernes Trece. Y el, so y el Zócalo se pobló de sombras is what it's called. I don't know why I don't know. Tongue tied. Long title. This was recorded October uh, Friday, October 13th, I believe. Yeah. So Friday 13th, October 2006. Um, this is a live album to celebrate their 10th anniversary. I believe it's called El Zócalo is the name of the venue. And it is so good. It's a very short set. It's about an hour. Um... If you get the DVD, it's an hour. If you get the CD, it's 47 minutes. But they just, they were very good live too. Um, and just the vocal work, especially from the lead singer, Duan. Uh, like her lungs must have been like made of like steel because she just goes. And they're very, honestly, if you're jumping around and like running around and singing on a stage like that, some of those songs like just take a lot of that out of you. And she does it wonderfully and then Vlad was also uh, singing while doing drums and he also sounds great baritone to her mezzo soprano I guess is I, what I would classify them Ooh. good show you know uh, some of their most iconic stuff hadn't actually gotten out in popular yet so we'll get to that in a second this is um, if you've noticed the Letanias Capitulo series went from Prohibido 1 to 3 and that is actually because they Saved off Chapter 2 for 2007. This is our first album, the only album they released in 2007. Uh, it is a re-recording, sort of, re-recording light of their demo of the same name. They came out, I think, in 2003. This, uh, that demo was four songs. All four of those songs are here, as well as just a handful of others. They covered the Phantom of the Opera, which, you know, the world totally needs more metal bands covering the Phantom of the Opera. But you know what? They did it well. Yeah. I think they did it the best, honestly. Um, this is the 2011 reprint, different disc. Great stuff. This album is probably my favorite, just because it's just so perfect. It's so dark and a little doomy at times and atmospheric and just, they actually have harsh vocals on this album for a little bit of a Beauty and the Beast flair, but not much. And it's just oh, so cheesy and cliche in the imagery. But the music is honestly very good. Uh, check it out. Atmospheric, gothic, very melodic. This one actually has longer songs, you know, a lot of them past the five minute mark, which is rare for them. And, you know, they're, they're just so catchy. And just the riffs and the leads and the melodies, the keyboard melodies are fantastic. I can't say 
you know, enough good things about them. And up next is another album that originally came out, I believe, in either 2005 or 2006 uh, as a double album, but was re-recorded and put out by Discos y Cintos Denver in 2010. Early, early, early 2010, I think like January 2010. And that is Sin Decir Adios and Without Saying Goodbye. So they released them as two separate Digipack uh, editions, which I honestly kind of prefer. They just so good. Honestly, it, it's a bad look, if I'm being honest. They, it's not a good cover, but I think that it works a lot better as separate editions than a double album. So basically, Sin Decir Adios and Without Saying Goodbye, Spanish, English. If I didn't mention, most of their stuff is in Spanish. Like, almost all of it. And the rest of it is in Spanish. Just if I didn't make that clear. Uh, so this is actually where we first see our, like, major diversity in this band's career. This is a bit more symphonic, a bit more folky. This actually has a, quite a bit of, like, Latin folk stuff going on in it. And it's just very catchy. It's not very dark or heavy. It is just very good straight ahead straightforward like gothic symphonic folky atmospheric very uplifting uplifting and it's honestly more major key than probably the rest of their stuff it's just so good and this one is actually nope this one was so hard to find because again i had this i think i got this as a christmas present in 2010 and then again my collection got stolen it's that's like the story of my life this whole channel i have to buy so much stuff back because, yeah, my collection got stolen. Um, and this was actually a uh, promo version that I got from Mexico. Uh, there was a seller on Facebook that had this. So, talk to them. They hooked me up. Ugh. Just ask, guys. Sometimes that's all you gotta do. So, yeah. Sin de Adios. This actually has the song that I first ever heard by this band. One of their most famous and iconic songs is... Uh, Nocturna, the third track off of this. It just starts with this like drum beat, this doom, doom, and the vocal on it. It's magical. It's pure magic. Is there's a reason why that's probably one of their you know most famous songs. It's just so catchy. It's magical. But yeah, so these were actually released. I guess I should asterisk that. Um, originally released on I think Discos Misha in 2005, 2007, somewhere in there. But these were actually released on La Llorona, which, as far as I can tell, they're distributed by Discos y Cintas Denver, and they're owned by Discos y Cintas Denver, and they still have, I don't, honestly, I don't really know what the deal with La, with La Llorona is. It's just a different record label that put out these digipacks, which I think are great. Um, very stocky. Anyways, moving on. Uh, this is a, an album from 2009. They released two albums in 2009. The first one being Hermanos de Sangre, La Iniciación. So this is uh, Blood Brothers. It's also an, a series that they did. And the way that they did this one was that uh, I believe, because if you go on YouTube and like look up the songs that are on these albums, people in the comments are saying, like, I wrote this poem. And they're like super proud that you know their poem got turned into a song by Ana Banda. So essentially, fans submitted poems that were then turned into songs by the band and they're all credited in the booklet so you know exactly who wrote the words and it's a great concept especially if you're you know like if you're one of those bands that has been around for a long time and you have kind of like this legacy and this cult following it's a great way to like integrate your fans into your music career uh that being said this first chapter is okay it's good like i can put it on and listen to it it's a lot more folky it's folk rock with some like dark rock kind of things going on one of these songs is straight up just kind of like jazzy i guess and the other and there's another one that's just kind of like a sea shanty kind of inspired thing so like it's mostly a folk rock album i would argue very different from their gothic metal stuff and this one was also released by la Girona. did you pack Fun stuff. And also in 2009, they put out El Pozo de los Deseos, or The Wishing Well. This is just oh, so, so pretty. I believe this is a 2011 reprint. The only way I can tell is um, the disc is different, or this actually might be the original. I don't remember. There's one 2009 and one 2011, and the only difference is that the disc is, 
has a different design. I think this is actually the original, and the 2011 has this red, beautiful design on it, which would have been great to have, but, you know, that's just a very shallow thing to mention. This is just more, uh, a little bit longer, honestly, too. It's just atmospheric, kind of gothic-y, but mostly not. Just really melodic, atmospheric, heavy metal. Um, just so pretty. Has that very fantastical, kind of whimsical element that a lot of this band actually has. So, like, yes, they're gothic and dark a lot of the time, but they also have this, like, level of whimsy that I think really works for them. Or worked, we'll, again, get to that later. Um, just really good. So pretty. And then, we're coming in towards the end. I have a second copy. This is the uh, Hermanos de Sangre, Chapter 2, El Ritual. So this is, again, taking fan poems and turning them into songs. All of these songs, except for one, the opener, is that. Uh, and this is actually a, lit a lot heavier. This is like more of a gothic folk metal hybrid. Uh, not produced the best. Uh, again, I think they were on La Llorona at this point, but not produced the best. I think this is when they started recording this stuff themselves, um, which, I mean, you know, sometimes it sounds great when bands do that, and sometimes it, it suffers a little bit. And it is one of those times. Uh, but this is just very simple, dark aesthetic. aesthetic. Oh, if you didn't notice, because I actually took forever to notice, it's a half of a skull with the flowers coming out of it. So here's the teeth and an eye socket. Yeah, I don't know why it took me forever to notice that, but it did. But yeah, so this is very simple aesthetic. Flowers, lyrics, again, the uh, writers of the poems are credited in the booklet. Let's see, can I make that focus? I don't think I can. Anyways, just very simple. Uh, for a 2000, you know, whatever, 11, 2015 reprint this is, I don't actually remember. Uh, it actually sounds pretty damn decent, and I'll get into the exceptions to that later down the line. But yeah, just dark, folky, really just melancholic, lyrically at least. Uh, metal. Really fun. This is actually a great fucking album. Uh, regardless of my gripes that I have with the production, fantastic. And then, I don't have the 15 year anniversary compilation album where they re-recorded 15 of their, you know, songs and released that, I think, independently. I don't have a copy of that, and I kind of don't want to, because in the one year between that last album and that compilation, so something happened. There was just it wasn't right anymore. And that's kind of something that has continued on with this band in the last, you know, of their golden days. So there's, uh, I guess, you know, Letanias Capitulo Cuatro. There's the promo. What are these called? Digi Sleeves? Or something? I don't know. This is a promo version, and this is the 2013, 15? 2015 reprint. This was originally released in 2013. And then released as a uh, jewel case on Disco Si Sinta Tender in 2015. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say with this. It's a lot heavier. Honestly, this album takes a lot from traditional heavy metal, I feel like, than their other stuff has. Like, not saying that the other stuff wasn't metal. It was. It just has a different feeling to the riffing style and, and the playing style. This is a bit more dry. It's a bit more traditional. It does have those, like, flowery melodies over it and the keyboard parts but it is definitely not your average gothic metal album it just has a bit more of like a mature not mature i guess mature i want to be a little bitchy mature like uh old feel like it definitely has like an older traditional feel uh very heavy sometimes it's, it, it can be a bit much for them but, you know, it, it's still good. It took a long time to get into this album for me just because of the vocal performances. Something happened to Duan Mari's voice, again, between 11, 2011 and 2012, that her voice just got real weird. Um, a little bit less free-sounding, a bit heavier in the chest, a little bit more in the nose. Um, very cliche atmosphere. So, like, again, it, it's not my least favorite album by them. It's just not my favorite by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but yeah, this actually has a lot more of a harsh vocal presen presence as well. So it's yeah, very low grumbly uh, growls. And I don't actually know who supplies them because I think Duan Mari started doing growls live and she does them also very low and grumbly. I think she does inhales. Um, but yeah, 
So that's something that is on this album that is not on any of their other albums. But it is still good. I still enjoy it. And then the last album that came out uh, during their golden era, I will call it, is this album that I talked about before. And that is Desiderata. And uh, if I'm being honest, my opinions of this have slightly changed since I've talked about it last on this channel. Um, I think I said I didn't like it originally. And it's by far probably the weakest album they ever did in their golden age. But I, I still do enjoy it. Um, it is produced kind of poorly, again, recorded by themselves. Um, and the digipack is kind of weak. And the artwork is kind of lame. I think it could have been great. But, yeah, I don't know. Just It's kind of all around a, a mess. It is a hot mess at times. But there are a few tracks on here that definitely, like, kill it and they you know it reminds you of why you would like a band like this to begin with just really atmospheric twinkly uh just catchy as all hell you know choruses and stuff and then in 2015 the two leaders of the band Duan Mari and Vlad Landeros they split ways and they are both still releasing music so Duan Mari kept the members of the band and they are currently putting out new music they have actually released like four albums since or something some ridiculous number in a very short amount of time and the and uh Vlad Landeros kept the original name so Duan Mari changed the name to Anabanta without the H and Vlad Landeros kept the H and is just basically doing it by himself and they're both being released I think under Disco Si Sin Descender I haven't actually checked um or been able to really confirm otherwise but you know so far they've also been releasing other things small little bits and pieces here that I'm going to get into, and this is where we're going to talk about, like, what I'm going to consider, like, the dark times? The bad times. Um, first, let's talk about the represses. And these are kind of, you know, the word of warning, caution, if you will. El Pozo de los Deseos. This is a 2015 reprint. It is cheap as all shit. It doesn't look nearly as nice. One, uh, it looks pretty fucking cheap. And then the actual sound quality on the fucking CD is like they remixed it or remastered it and all the high frequencies are just way too forward and the bass is too honest it's just also too forward there's a lot of peaking and clashing and just noise it's just it's not good um if you can avoid getting this I would recommend it if you can find an original 2009 or the 2011 reprint get those those are fantastic those sound great this sounds like garbage um and i have two of these um because of a mistake so i bought this thinking i was getting like a digipack version did not and then i found a digipack version on ebay but i guess somehow i clicked one step too far so i found my way back to the jewel case ordered it immediately tried to cancel it and then they were like no and it was from the same vendor too i think so that was whatever they want to get rid of it that's fine they sold me both uh but i have two of these it's garbage don't get it um next i have a sin de dios reprint same issues it looks like hot garbage as far as i can tell it, these are official these are officially put out by the escocia sin as far as i can tell uh people have shared this stuff with the band on you know the internet to be like see i got a copy of it i love it and they respond in kind like thumbs up thank you and i don't understand how this is okay it looks like garbage it sounds like garbage it's if i'm being real though this one was a lot less poorly mixed than the Pozo de los Deseos reprint this was at least okay um I, I don't know what happened to this label and i don't know what happened to this band this is mm, that's like a hate crime and then the worst offender the worst offender is the desiderata, the desiderata jewel case this um i was excited because i was like i don't care if it's not the gg pack i'll just get the jewel case it'll be fine and then i opened it and it was not fine because the fucking disc is Letanias Capitulo Cuatro. This is why on fucking Spotify and iTunes, 
the album covers are swapped. Someone fucked up. And when they repressed this and published it online digitally, they made a mistake. This is the wrong disc. This is the wrong album in the fucking jewel case. <sighs> Atrocious. The worst fucking thing. The worst fucking thing. Again, as far as I know, these are official. These are official. I don't know. I was very disappointed. <laughs> um, moving on. So those are just represses. This is not the biggest problem I have. Vlad Landeros, under the original name, has been also re-releasing or just releasing demos. Um, re-releasing some demos, like like old demos from like 2002, with more tracks and putting them out as like remastered versions of the demos. Uh, this is not an example of that. This is actually just a demo album that he put out. Under, again, Disco Si Sintat Sanver, as far as I know, this is official. This is Ecos de la Manacer. This is uh, demos that were recorded between the years 2008 and 2018, I believe. Put together, just compiled. Uh, it's just not good. They sound like demos. They sound like hot garbage. Uh, a lot of these demos weren't actually finished. So Juan Mari's vocals aren't even on a lot of these songs. So it's just Vlad Landero singing her part. So like pitched up, like, like they have to like falsetto all over the place. So he's just using a falsetto. It doesn't sound good. Uh, it's messy. It sounds bad. And it's just like whatever. It only cost me $7. It doesn't look great. Again, as far as I know, this is official. I have a picture of the two together. I think they were married and had kids. I don't really know what their relationship was. I don't know. Again, it was hard to do research on these people. Just, it makes me sad. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I have by this artist is uh, not the Vlad Landeros version of the band, but the Duan Mari version of the band. And that is Anavanta without the H. And this is the first EP. No, this is the second EP that she released with her band after the split. The first one is Los Reunidos, and I don't have a copy of that. This came out, I believe, in 2019 under Sun Empire Productions, which is weird, because as far as I know, nothing before or since has been released under Sun Empire Records, except for maybe a, another repressing of Latanias Capitulo Cuatro. I don't understand why. But this is just, I've talked about this album before, or this EP before. It's not produced well. The vocals on it are bad. It sounds bad. It's a bad album, uh, release. And honestly, it... As much as it, like, pains me to say, this just might be, you know, the point where I just stop purchasing releases by this band that I have, like, you know, come into metal with and have listened to since I was, like, 11. Um, I just might have to stop buying these albums because I just don't like them and I don't enjoy them. And it sucks. I just, it's not fun anymore <laughs> to, like, listen to these new releases. I don't look forward to them. I don't look forward to, like the day that I'll be able to, like, find some copies for sale on Discogs or eBay for, like, a limited time because they're just not good. And that's really sad. But, yeah, but I always have the, uh, 11, I think, albums that they did during their golden age. I always have those, and I can always go back and listen to those. And I do. Often. Especially during the summer, I think, is usually when I listen to them. But, yeah, well, thanks for watching. That is all my Anabanta. This went for a long time. I wish I had, like, more details to share with you about this band, but, like, there isn't much out there. Um, and it really was, for the longest time, just a two-piece with some hired help. So just dive on in. Make sure that what you're listening to is, like, probably of the golden era, the golden age, and not horrible, horrible, horrible remixes, remasters. They're bad. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get another one filmed tonight. Because um, I've been gone for a long time. And then I have one bigger thing planned that I've had written. I actually scripted a thing out. And you'll know it when you see it because it'll be something totally different from what I usually put out. Um, but I've been looking forward to this for a while. So, thank you for watching. See you again soon. Uh, have a good one. Bye. Call to action, follow me, stuff, subscribe, like, up that engagement, follow me on Twitter at Macabre Manscape. don't follow me on Instagram, because I don't post, there's no point. Um, yeah, thank you, bye!